Pick out in discussion is Media Research and joining the panel, CEO of SAF, Paul Haupt, Marketing Services Manager of Prime Media Outdoor, Terry Murphy, and Director of Innovation and Development at TNS Research Surveys, Neil Hicks. Welcome to the show. Paul, we know, and the industry knows, that it could hardly exist without SAF and TAMs and AMPs and RAMs and whatever the case may be, but we also know that nothing is perfect. So we contacted a few industry experts to say, what are you finding on a day-to-day -day basis? The challenges are with the research that's available uh, to you today. First of all, the general feeling that we found was definitely in television, where people are saying Talma in terms of the universe is not big enough. Um, and therefore it's not giving a true reflection of viewership in South Africa. How do you respond to that, Paul? Look, you know, you must re remember the one thing about media audience research is, is that it's extremely expensive. Yeah. So the biggest problem in any country in the world, when, especially when you're looking at television measurement, is the amount of money available. And people always ask me, they say to me, you know, what is, what is this, uh, the sample size that we should have? Mm. And the sample size that you should have is the biggest one that you can afford. Right. That's not a very scientific answer but it's the only one that we have. So you're saying the bigger the sample, the better the quality of research would be? Well, to a large extent, yes, because you know, uh, if you look at the proliferation of television channels, and it, this will get a lot worse in the next five years, yeah. you really need ex extraordinary big samples because of the fragmentation of the audiences. There will be hundreds of channels where only a few people are watching it at a specific moment in time, and for us to measure that, that's a real challenge. Mm. But you know, I still think that at the moment, with the money available, we're doing an, a, a sterling job. Uh, the TAM system that we have in South Africa and that we will have from 2012 when there's a new contract that's going to start, it's, it's uh, the cutting edge stuff that's used all over the in first world mm. countries. You know. And we are going to talk about that a little bit later on, Paul, but I just want to get back with TAMS in, in its current form. So yes. are you saying that in its current form, um, it acts in a better way in terms of for a, a mass channel rather than a smaller channel? because of, of your, your universe? Look, you know, always remember that it's, it's more difficult to measure small channels than big channels. For a big channel like SABC1, mm -hmm. for instance, you know, very easy to measure. You don't need thousands and thousands of respondents to, to measure it. If you go to the smaller channels and there are dozens of them, yes, then it is more difficult. Mm. But also remember that we work on a, off a very big base. You know, at the moment we have more than 5,000 people on the, on the TAMS panel. So you have a very big base and therefore you can fairly accurately determine that a channel is small. You might not be able to give them the detailed information about the audiences that they would like to have. Mm. And I think that for the media owners is a real problem. You know, they would like to analyze their audiences, learn That's more right. about the audiences, and you can't do that for a small channel. Terry, what do you think this is the answer for smaller channels? Well, um, I, I think that the industry has expectations in that they need a, a very granular degree of measurement. You know, advertisers like to measure their spots and how particular spots um, performed. And from a content perspective, um, they they want to know how a program performed, how particular content within a program performed. So the needs are great, and as Paul says, the expense is huge. Okay, so I think the solution um, for a multi-channel environment is only going to ever be something like DSTVI. Mm -hmm. okay. The TAMS, the, the general TAMS um, panel is there to cater for the entire TV population so that we can put something like DSTVI into context within the greater TV um, scenario. But you say that, but um, what the feedback that we are getting is that because DSTVI is an independent resource, and I don't know, Neil, maybe you want to take this, this question, and the target market differs from TAMS, Guys are, are saying we're not comparing apples to apples here. Mm, I think that's an um, oversimplification, Jackie. I think the key thing is on the TAMS panel, there are only about 500 DSTV households, which, mm. as Paul says, isn't enough to get into the minutia of all the channels they've got. So they're, they're now funding their own panel of DSTV subscribers. So it is comparing like with like in terms of, of the 504-odd TAMS panel members. But the, the panel size is, is four or five times bigger. So we can get down to those small channels. And I must say the problem isn't only limited to TV. I mean, people like Caxton's do their own right. big study called Roots, yeah. which is huge, to get into community papers which have a similar kind of level of fragmentation and the same problem. So it's a, it's a problem that goes well beyond TV. 
Mm. So let's, let's just look back at DSTVI. I mean, it's, it's been implemented, and how is it working? Well, we've been live for some time. The, the live launch was last year. We ha had had an extensive period of testing prior to that because it uses return path data, which means it picks up what channel is being viewed at the time and sends that back um, as your, your part of your data. And in fact, that's going to be the way of the future as we go more into mobile um, devices mm -hmm. and viewing of, of uh, media on personalized mobile, which is really going to be the way of the future for Africa mm. and South Africa in particular. Mm. And then just touching on that, when we go digital, Paul, is Telmar ready for that? Or is that when your 2012 comes in in the new systems? Look, you know, to go to DTT is not an enormous problem for us. Technically, we've tested it, whether we can do it, and yes, we can already do it with existing equipment. With the new equipment coming in 2012, we'll be, do, be able to do it even better. So that's not such a, a big uh, challenge for us. I think the big challenge really will be things like time shifted viewing and so on, which is slowly but surely growing in South Africa. If you look at countries like the USA, 40% of households already have PVRs mm -hmm. or DVRs as they call it. Yeah. And so that, I think things like that will become much more of a challenge than the, the, the change over to DTT. Um, we, DSTBI is already starting a pilot on time shifted viewing. Right, tell us um, about it. That's going to happen towards the middle of this year, mm -hmm. um, and it will be an extensive panel just of PVR people, and the technology to do the time sh shifted um, audience measurement is there in place. Mm. But obviously there will be a t period of piloting and testing to make sure before we roll out that it's all correct. Mm. So Tim, we're already in doing that. Your thoughts on out-of-home viewing? It's always been, mm. how do we measure out-of-home? And you now being um, at Prime Media Outdoor, mm. what, what are the challenges there? Okay, you're talking about television out of home viewing? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, obviously it's inc extremely important in our country and it's mm. extremely important um, for the likes of DSTV because they've got so much sport and this is where all the out of home viewing um, happens. That's so nice, yes. I don't, um, I don't think it's on the agenda and you can correct me for the new TAMS, um, for the new measurements uh, yeah, from next year. Is it on the agenda? No. Okay. Well, it's, it's extremely important, and I think it's extremely important for the media owners in terms of marketing, too. Tell us about yeah. it, Paul. In the new tender, the things that we've made sure of is that the new technology will be able to measure all types of viewing on different pieces of equipment, like if you're viewing t a TV channel on your laptop, we'll be able to measure it. If a person uh, views television on a cell phone, we will be able to measure it. If there are big events, we will be able to do special, you know, under speci special circumstances. If people really want to measure the audiences at big events, one will be theoretically be able to do it. Whether the, m the money will be for there for something like that is a completely well, different question. That's the other thing, is the funding is what I wanted to ask you. Um, yeah. Because you mentioned earlier that funding is a problem. Currently, it's 1% that of revenue that uh, media owners pay. Yes. What would you like to see happen to be able to overcome inefficiencies that are, have been brought to the table? I think, you know, the industry at the moment is, is re-looking the whole funding model. And what probably will have to happen is that different industry sectors will have to pay different levies. In other words, if you have a high technology environment like the one that television is in, maybe they will have to contribute a, a one and a half percent, whatever the number may be. But it will be de de uh, totally depend on that industry, whether mm. they prepare to pay that much. But what does staff need? Do you need... 100% more, 200% more, in order to, you know, and especially 2012 around the yeah, corner yeah. And, the, and the new Talma and everything being well, launched. I can tell you that at the moment the television survey TAMS is costing us about 33 million rand a year. We reckon that in 2012 this will jump to about 45 million rand a year. Yeah. So that is the quantum that we're going to require to be able to do everything that the industry desires. Naturally, as time goes by and the needs grow, you know, for yeah. out of home and all of the other things, that number will also increase, you know. There's, mm. yeah, there's no free ride in this thing. Last question to Neil, and just going back um, one more time to DSTVI. I know that um, there were talks of launching into Africa. Nigeria would have been phase one. Um, can you give us an update on that? Um, I think there's still plans for that kind of thing happening. I don't think they've been made public yet, so I don't really want to get into that. Mm, because that's a challenge, isn't it? The rest of Africa, Terry. Research. Yeah, gee. <laughs> <laughs> Any plans yeah. from South side? Look, you know, there, there, there is a faint possibility, and again, you know, it depends on our industry strike stakeholders, that mm -hmm. we, we might venture at some stage uh, into the adjoining countries. It's not, n not really been on the agenda up to now. There are certain of our stakeholders that have spoken to us and said to us, why don't you measure in the surrounding countries at least? Mm. There is a, a real problem to get decent television data in the rest of Africa. 
It's mostly still driven by diaries. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing, you know. If you have a good diary system, it can also provide you with very good information. But I think at some stage, you know, we will have to overcome that a little bit of a hump in the road. Begin. And, and one of the big things is when you look at ad spend in the country south of the Sahara, the South African advertising market is as big as all of those markets together. So they have an, if we have a serious financial problem, they have a very serious one in those countries. Terry, you're shaking your head. Do you agree with... Uh, Absolutely. I was just going to say it depends who's going to support it. I mean, anything's possible, yeah. given money. But there isn't the, um, the support, actually, at this point. And, and I do think in Africa we're going to be superseded from conventional media by mobile. Mobile in Africa is already huge, and mm. Africa and emerging markets in general are skipping the whole laptop, mm. PC, desktop phase and going straight to mobile. Straight to mobile, because the I penetration is 100%. Mm. Exactly, and I think a lot of entertainment is going to be viewed via mobile, especially as cheaper Chinese uh, yeah. smartphones hit the market. So I think that's going to be the big challenge in Africa, rather than perhaps conventional media. Okay.